G'day everybody and welcome to another episode of Life Off-Road. This week we're heading down to the Otways. We're looking forward to another spectacular day on the tracks, so let's get into it. Good morning everyone, great to have you along for another fantastic adventure. Morning Simon, how beautiful is this? Me and Daz in the car here mate, loving it. We've got a bit of wind building, we've got a bit of heat coming our way. We've just noticed in the last hour or so the wind's really started to pick up. I've got a secret weapon, I've got Mike, who's a local farmer, his company today. So I've got the inside track on all the good spots. Up early this morning, took a drive into forest, had some breakfast, great coffee at the local store and then we've headed out into the Otway. I brought along my son Levi for the trip, uh, but he is absolutely pumped to see some tracks. Look around where we are now, we're an hour and a half out of Melbourne and we're basically in the rainforest, it's, it's unbelievable. Very excited to do these hills, the scenery here is just magical. I've never been to the Otways before and I think this is absolutely spectacular. How good is it to get out of lockdown? We're out to explore the bush finally. I've been to the Otways several times before. Sometimes we've been bogged for about three hours getting through a five kilometre stretch of path, but we're expecting a great day. First weekend out of lockdown, guys. I dare say we're going to see a bit of traffic on the tracks today. How you going, guys? We're doing all right, just getting started. We just, they were just asking if it's muddy down there. I said, I saw you come up, I was like, I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. Maybe, uh, yeah, keep the windows up. I will, thanks, mate. Done a lot of work down in the Otways. The Otways is almost my backyard. I live in the western side of Melbourne. Great thing about the Otways is you don't need a huge amount of experience inside here. There's very simple tracks some beautiful vantage points, great lookouts. It starts all the way back at Anglesey and work your way all the way down the Great Ocean Road straight through the Otways. I've been to the Otways before, but I've always come in from the coastal side, from Lawn. Never come in via the back. A lot more tracks on this side. We've been coming along here for a little while now. Really hilly area, really nice scenic route. Lots of ups and downs, lots of really great descents and really good descents. Even on it's supposed to be a hot summer day, we've got great tree coverage, nice and shady. It's a perfect area. And to tell you the truth, we've been locked up in isolation for that long. Getting out in the bush has just been key. It's what the doctor ordered. We went through an interesting section, one of the valleys, long section along the river, and it was very wet very muddy, very sticky. Especially when you get down into the lower parts, really slushy and muddy, and lots of fun. Yeah. Yep. Window. I'll put my window up, don't worry. You don't want mud inside? No. You don't want mud in the car? Okay. <laughs> Pretty cool? Cool. Not too difficult. A couple of interesting sections, a few river crossings. Nothing that's got us into too much trouble just yet. The big hill with the ruts was one of the highlights already. A long right hander sweeping up, so as you're getting a bit of pace up, there's ruts in the middle and there's holes along the side and everything was a bit of a challenge. It's actually very rough, guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, it's a lot of fun. So, Daz, this is going to be a bit of fun, mate. doesn't do it justice. You can't take the photograph. Oh, he's got sideways. Did you see the bouncing from here? Yeah, so it's going to strap in. You're still in two wheel drive, Mike? No, no, four wheel drive, four high, it's a lot more fun. Right. 
Okay, we're gonna bump around a lot. Alright. It was great fun. Really good to get up there. It felt special. Um, <laughs> I'm really looking forward to what's coming up. We have waited all day for this. <laughs> A long, flat, slippery section. We're up on top of the spur, so it's surprising to see so much wet. The track's as expected. A little bit of mud. It's certainly not as boggy or as wet as what I did expect. <sighs> Look, mud's mud. It's dirty. It just goes everywhere. Today's mud was a little bit different. Um, it's like clay. It was very, very slippery. There was hidden ruts and things that you weren't ready for. It adds a challenge and it makes it a bit of fun. So I came across a great section today for the rains they've had recently. Still a lot of water around, a lot of bog holes, a lot of mud, very slippery. Look at this one. Want to make it, Mike? Want to make it? There's one thing that's always said to us that mud means money and nothing can spill that any more than the Otways. I tried to keep an even throttle pedal, so I was not accelerating too hard or too slow. Kept my momentum up. Whatever, whatever I did worked, so <laughs> I think it's more arse than glass. Your steering really has very little effect on what direction you actually travel. We've had some people hit it pretty hard, and I'm normally one of those people that, that hits it quite hard. So far, I haven't got stuck. I'm hoping that we can get through without having to be winched out. That'd be awesome. No winching required just yet. Looks like somebody's stuck. Time for a recovery. His recovery point, which is on the bull bar, is right underneath the mud. We can't get to it. We're going to do something a little bit different. We're actually going winch hook to winch hook using a soft shackle because we've only got to pull him a very, very short distance. So a very short, safe recovery. There you go. <laughs> Ground clearance and traction. That's all it is. The problems we have with this car is that it is a little bit lower to the ground than some of the others, as well as the type of tyre that we could put on it at the stage. So we had that little bit of disadvantage compared to the other vehicles. Most of us are running Mickey Thompson's or Cooper tyres and they've got fantastic troll pattern. It'll just literally clear the mud as you get in that tyre spinning and that's what gets you through. Lockers help, height help, but momentum is the key. A set of mud tyres on this would help dramatically and drive it like you stole it. But anyway, that's part of the fun. It's not just as easy as going, I'll get through that, my car's capable. If your car is capable, that, that's great, but if you're by yourself, know your limits. Especially if you're somewhere that doesn't have any trees, you don't have any recovery equipment, you're going to easily find yourself in a little bit of trouble. It was rotted, mud everywhere, it was just amazing. When it rains here and there's a lot of rain, you get into a wet section, very clay soil, and it's going to be very tough. No issues with it at all, and certainly recommend it to anyone to come down. I'm a bit of a mud fan. I think we could do with a little bit more.
track was spectacular. It was challenging and it was very slippery, deep mud. Momentum was my friend again. Keep the foot going and got through it okay. Been through an interesting muddy section, really muddy, very sticky, very soft. The flocks make a huge difference. Fortunately, got through no damage and no winching. That was a bit of fun. Wow, that was a lot of mud. You can just feel the car sliding along the middle part of it. Feel very sorry for car washes tomorrow morning, that's for sure. Mix famous donuts. There's been a lot of changes of scenery all day. We've had dusty, dirty tracks, we've had sandy tracks, we've had huge descents, huge ascents, and heaps of mud. Well guys, we're coming down to the bottom here, the valley, just an absolute beautiful floor, everything's green, there's a bit of rain around, but we've got a little bit of a problem. What's that? Well, really sad to see, but some campers have left a fire going down here. Everyone will come down, we'll park up and get that fire out and we'll keep going. An absolutely beautiful area and what a stunning campsite this would make. Now these guys have tried to do the right thing, they've thrown some dirt over it, but they should have just thrown some water in there. There's a mud puddle right there they could have used. There's no shortage of water around. You can see how dry this is. Once you break that dirt off the surface, that is just hot and ready to go. It wouldn't take a lot for that to fan up and get going again. How's it all going, Levi? <laughs> Wicked, so good to hear, buddy. I've had a quick look, and it's not too bad. It's dry, dry as a bone, it's steep but drivable. Just happy to have a crack. Yeah, not here for a haircut. <laughs> Alright guys, we'll delay lunch slightly. Let's get on to Cowley Link and have a cracker today. Sounds good. I had one of our great friends in the car with me today, Darren from our work, and he's from the Himalayas. He understands Steve. He said to me, he said, I've never experienced anything like this. We're going down. Low range gear, first gear, I've done it millions of times. So for me, it's a piece of cake. I'm used to it. For him, he was putting his hands and legs on the windscreen thinking, hey, this is not good. The back of the car is gonna fall over the front. That's the Otways for you. It's just amazing down here. You can get all of that in a day trip out of Melbourne. Getting to the top of a hill wondering, oh, oh, I'm not sure what's on the top, over the top, then coming down again. Wow, it's steep coming down. Thankfully it wasn't too wet. We had some fairly steep areas there, but I know that if it was wet, we would have had a lot of grip issues. Steep descents, key thing is, make sure you leave enough space between yourself and the vehicle in front of you. The last thing you want to do is get into a bit of trouble and go into one of the vehicles in front of you. Left a fair bit of space, low range, had the rear diff locks on just to drag the vehicle back. Levi, what do you think? Steep. Pretty crazy, huh? It was interesting because I had Levi in the back and, and you'd look in the rearview mirror and you'd see Levi kind of sitting in his car seat, holding his harness. It almost looked like he was looking directly down. It was heaps of fun. Okay, this section is really steep. I've got a passenger who picked up Mike, our local farmer. He's ready for some Iveco action. How beautiful is it down here, Simon? Have a look at that fernery. 
we came through these most amazing ferneries. So you're inside and it just thinking this is like a tropical paradise. A couple of river crossings and a couple of really good high climbs out of it. Oh, that's a nice climb. Oh yeah. <laughs> The benefit of being in Victoria is we got all the different sceneries of gravel and sand and mud and everything in the one location. Pretty cool, huh? Crazy. That was cool, mate. Through the creek, up the hill. When you turned the vehicles off, all you could hear was water going through the rocks and a little creek and the sound of birds. Just really, really peaceful. So before we found ourselves on a track going uphill, it seemed all good. A couple of trees down over the tracks. Of course, Simon threw down the gauntlet and said, Mick, you'll get over that one. Mike decided to go over one of the logs the Arbeco had just gone over. Unfortunately, got himself snagged on the dip, front and rear really instantly got himself stuck. It's another mess you got us into Durham. We're stuck on a log. He'd go forward and his rear diff would get stuck. He'd try and come backwards, couldn't get off it, there was a tree behind him. Instantly we realised that he was basically stuck, there was nothing we could do. It's just man versus nature after a certain point, isn't well, it? Well, the nature's dead. <laughs> so maybe the man's next. To get out, what we do is we have to pack a lot of logs, lift the vehicle, lift the wheel so that we clear the log and get over. And that made a big difference. What shone through was having the right equipment and the right knowledge and a calm approach to surmounting the problem. So because the log was actually caught on the diff, we had to lift the back axle up enough to get over that log. Once we could do that, it could slide on the log over and above the obstacle. Happy days. Discretion became the better part of valour and the rest of us skirted the log and made it through unscathed. So coming up those last few hill climbs and especially where we got stuck over that log we noticed that Mike's temperature was climbing up a little bit in his engine, not in the driver's seat. We popped the bonnet just to have a quick check and we found one of his fan belts has flipped itself inside out. Now these vehicles, it's an old petrol motor, they are susceptible to overheating. A diesel, any four wheel drive can overheat on hills, you've got to be careful with them. But it's got two fan belts running in parallel, so it's not going to be the real cause of the issue. We'll keep an eye on his temperature to see how he goes, but just for safety's sake we're going to loosen up the alternator Flip that belt back over where it should be, and get back on the tracks. Now whilst we are doing that, Mike's out the back making some lunch. Probably a little bit late, more like afternoon tea, but hey, better late than never. So right now we're just finishing the last part of the Land Cruiser off, and the next is a reportedly quite an easy track through to the falls, so I'm looking forward to seeing that. Today's been awesome. I mean, I think my personal highlight for the day was I brought my son Levi along. He's never been four-wheel driving to this extreme. He's been really enjoying it. The guys have been really, really good to him, and it's just been an amazing day. Great spot to finish at the waterfalls. Just an iconic location to end up with. Who doesn't like a waterfall? Running water, nature at its best. When you get a chance to come and witness something like that, every opportunity should be taken to do it. It's a great end to the great day.